And I, I believed it, but I was waiting, and of course, August 15th, 1971, it occurred, and shortly thereafter, I said, I gotta at least talk about this, because I found it fascinating, and ran for Congress the first time uh, in 1974. But it wasn't only the announcement in 1971, uh, and uh, the fact that it was a Republican, it was Nixon, it was wage and price controls, and tariffs, and closing the gold winner. It, uh, it was the reaction the next day that got my attention. It was a Sunday when they made that announcement. And on Monday, uh, the Chamber of Commerce came out and fully endorsed it. And uh, the stock market loved it. The stock market at that time uh, uh, went up a total of 34 or 38 points. It was a historic movement of the Dow in one day. And uh, that's probably like three, 600 points or something today. But it went up 38 points, 34 points or whatever. And uh, so the markets were ecstatic about the and, the, and the business people were ecstatic. The banks were loving it. Of course, you know, I thought, well, something is strange. I, I didn't believe that they were right, but uh, I understood that we will not be saved by those people who are involved and have that type of mentality. The one thing I can assure you from this campaign and spending many years in this business is that uh, our country and our market and our dollar will not be saved by big corporations or international financial people. They are very, very rarely our allies. It doesn't mean that every single one of them uh, won't be on our side, but people who are uh, grassroots individuals. I mean, the support for no income tax and getting rid of the Federal Reserve comes from common people, working people, minorities, all kinds of people that you would think doesn't, they, won't, they don't even understand the issue, and uh, yet, yet they do. But the, the individuals who have learned to milk the system is quite different. Now, one thing that I think happened in this campaign, I think the attention getter was foreign policy. I, I think that was the big issue. I heard that the most. And the great thing about foreign policy is it invited a lot of different people into our organization. It wasn't just the conservatives. And uh, it was uh, across the board, independents, liberal Democrats, Green Party people, and whatever. But you know, one of the most disappointing events, even though uh, we uh, achieve something in spite of it. Early on in the, in the campaign, there was a debate being held in Iowa, crucial state, we wanted to have a presence there. And so we were waiting and waiting for the invitation. And all of a sudden uh, we'd call, well, no, we, we don't want you there, you can't come. But, but to me, the strange things was, and this, there's a message in this too, that the, the debate was being held by a fundamentalist Christian group, right to life group, and I have pretty good credentials in that area, and uh, an anti-tax group. You know, here I have the best congressional record against taxes, and I s strongly respect life. I also respect the Constitution and deal with that maybe in a different uh, way than some might want, but nevertheless, those two groups excluded me from it. So that, that is interesting. That describes what kind of problems that we have to deal with. But you know, they had six or 700 people show up to that rally. So we went next door, literally next door, and started our rally, not to disrupt or boycott or anything like that on their rally. As their rally broke up, we started ours and we had 1,200 people show up. So, uh, But the foreign policy was the issue that so many have, have come uh, to, to us. And, uh, and I, I think that uh, this has opened up the door because uh, my position was believable. It was crisp, uh, crystal clear, and it was crisp, and they knew what it was. And uh, matter of fact, I sort of like the one that I, I uh, when they tried to have me describe what I wanted to do uh, about Iraq uh, during one of the debates, and, you know, they, they all have, well, on the one hand, we'll do this. On the other hand, we'll do this. We'll expand this, and we'll after this, and yes, we'll come home. You know, all that junk. <laughs> and uh, so my answer for my, our foreign policy to make the point was, we just marched in. Why don't we just march home? <laughs> Thank you.
And you'd be surprised how, surprised how many young people remembered that and would, would come to me and say, when you said that, I knew where you stood. <laughs> and then another, another, several others would also mention in the foreign policy area that they sort of had a light bulb go on uh, when I would talk about, and so many of you have talked about, and you understand this argument, and that is, uh, you know, uh, why don't we, uh, what, is, what would it be like if we, somebody else treated us like we treat them? And that is, and I use the example, what if another country looked different than us, and they were stronger economically and militarily? It's like the Chinese, and they have a different language, they have different religions, they have different political values, but they might want our oil in the Gulf of Mexico. I said, what if they came and put bases on, you know, in our country? How would, how would we react? Now that registered with a lot of people and they could see it. Well, I don't think we would like that. Of course we wouldn't like it, but it would unify this country. And I bet you everybody would believe in the Second Amendment once again, you know, if the Chinese, somebody invaded us like that. <laughs> But uh, it's, uh, it, it was a real attention getter and it has given me tremendous opportunity. There's a lot in the book about uh, foreign policy. I would say in the 70s I concentrated much more on economic policy and monetary policy. Uh, ever since I first day I went to Congress, I've always been on banking or what is called now the financial services and to deal with the monetary issue. And now I am a, uh, a ranking member on the domestic monetary policy subcommittee. And surprisingly enough, I get along with Democrats probably a little bit better than I get along with the Republicans. So I'm in a good, a good position. But one thing that I certainly wouldn't hold my breath for is holding my breath and say, you know, as soon as the Republicans take over the Congress, I'll get to be a subcommittee chairman. <laughs> not going to happen. Two reasons. It, it's not going to happen soon that the Republicans are ever going to take over. And besides, they might change, uh, change their attitude about me being a ranking member or, or whatever. But anyway, it gives me a chance. Uh, that offer, that position, offers me a little more time uh, when Bernanke comes before the committee, and, it, uh, and I'm also on Joint Economic Committee, and he and the Secretary of Treasury frequently comes before that committee, so that, uh, that gives me a little more activity. But after I went back uh, to Congress in 97, I was out for 12 years, um, a lot had happened in, in foreign policy, and uh, I became much more interested and uh, I asked to be on, uh, you know, international relations and, and at the time. And they said, um, oh, uh, that, shouldn't be, that shouldn't be difficult. Nobody really wants that. You can't raise that much money from that committee. Everybody wants on ways and means and uh, these committees where you, you know, you have access to the lobbyists and, and you get to raise all this money. Uh, so, but uh, they came back to me and they said, uh, you can be on banking, but you can't be on international relations. And, uh, and I said, well, why is that? You told me last week it wouldn't be any problem at all. And they raised one of the political action uh, groups uh, that is well known, and I wouldn't dare mention the name. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, they have some influence on our foreign policy uh, now and then. And I may mention the name of that country a little bit later on. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, they, they, literally, they literally admitted that I was blackballed. But I persisted and two or four years later I finally uh, I did get on, uh, on that, uh, that committee. And I certainly uh, uh, took it very seriously because I was there when the resolution came up in uh, 2000, uh, 2002 dealing with the authority uh, to go, uh, go to war. But before that occurred, uh, something happened in 1998 which uh, is a very important event and, and generally ignored, and not too many people talk about it, and that was the Iraq Liberation Act of 1998. And uh, I found out about it, uh, that it was going to be on the floor very late, and, um, and it's under suspension. Suspension, no controversies. Uh, the leadership in both parties love it, endorse it, and that's it. But there's a neat little rule that's still on the books, that if both parties are trying to railroad something through on suspension, and if you as an independent, you, they protect the minority, if you as one individual say, look, it's only fair that I, my position in opposition to this, I get time in opposition. So there was uh, 20 minutes on each side. 